Our first headline from the Daily Beast, riots in the rubble. Beirut explodes in violence. Protesters gassed. After deadly blast, anguish has turned to anger in the Lebanese capital with police using tear gas on protesters out on the streets to demand transparency over deadly port explosion. Now, there's a lot that's telling about this. And before I get into this story in a little more detail, I want to point out a few things. Because I released this video, we did our coverage to say this is the, the full story of the Beirut blast. And I know it's it's not like, yeah, there's always going to be more to it, but that was part of what I said in there. And I, it was a complete analysis. It, like There are going to be follow-ups in terms of what happens in Beirut, the government response, the policy response, what happens with France, with Macron looking like he's trying to start a revolution over there. Right? And you go, hmm, a, a neo-neo-imperialism emerges from the new political reality of the world with the internet. And uh, like, let's let's just go over first what we know we know, because there are known knowns and there are known unknowns and there are unknown unknowns, right? Okay, so we know generally from the videos, we can be confident that this big explosion happened. We can be reasonably certain from the way that the Lebanese government is talking about this and that no one has questions, general public records, that there was a stash of ammonium nitrate stored improperly at a government port because it had been seized by customs, right? Jim, I, I mean, I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong, that's not really in dispute, right? And so th there have been a lot of different conspiracy theories already around this, you know, and, and none of them are saying, well, there's always crazy ones like, no, the whole thing was a bomb, it was still a nuke. And it's like, no, 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 just not plausible shit, given what we know we know. now. That uncertainty comes into how did it start, right? And so I've seen people promoting videos and some of these crazy like uh, conspiracy theories that there was a, a, a missile that came down. There's a video from the other angle that, and it's like, no. I first of all, I'm more inclined to believe that that's like edited in that someone's just trying to like. And you, right away with something like this, you see people politicizing it, right? Everybody wants to not only view this through, but use this as a bludgeon to support their ideology. And I think the thing that's undeniable about this, the government is at fault for creating the, the situation, for being irresponsible with the storage of this ammonium nitrate. Now, could it have been sparked by a, a total accident, right? It could have been, could have been a welder. Uh, that was one of the theories, one of the reports that we've seen. But would, would you ever trust that, right? What, what if the government did it deliberately? But what because you get one of the possible that there are some possible theories here. So what set this off, right? And now that we're seeing France get involved, you go, mm, yeah. I mean, it could still just be an accident that they're taking advantage of politically, right? I mean. They never ascribe to conspiracy that which can be adequately explained by greed and incompetence, right? It might just be opportunism. And it really doesn't matter, right? And now I want I want to sort of remember, remember, remember the, the, the core takeaways that, that we need from this going forward. One, the, the government of Lebanon sucks. Okay, we knew, uh, yeah, <laughs> we already knew that, right? But no, now we know, and now the people of Lebanon have a unique motivation to say, mm, no fucking way. No, no, sorry, we're not putting up with this shit anymore. And that's what we're seeing, right? As we covered yesterday with Macron touring the blast site and talking to victims and hugging and offering. And, you know, we actually said he came out like directly publicly. This is kind of, kind of blatant. To say, you know, you guys should have uh, some political change as a result of this. So the other big takeaway is France should have no special power over the reformed Lebanon that comes out of that. And, and real support for the people of Lebanon as they're going through the political change that's going to come out of this is making sure that they don't get the standard 
corruption of imperialism. Police in the Lebanese capital of Beirut used tear gas on protesters who took to the streets Thursday night to demand accountability over the monstrous Tuesday explosion that killed at least 150 people and injured more than 5,000. Small fires were set in front of the main parliament hall and angry people threw rubble from the blast at police and riot gear. A paper trail shows how government officials ignored warnings for more than six years about the 2,750 metric tons of ammonium nitrate that was carelessly stored in a port hangar before it detonated has led to widespread calls for an independent investigation into the blast. <clears throat> Prosecutors have detained 16 port staff over the incident, but no government officials have yet been formally implicated despite allegations that they ignored requests to remove the explosives from the city's main port. Lebanon's new prime minister, Hassan Diab promised that those found responsible would pay a heavy price. Look in the mirror, asshole. Uh, but let, let's just also look at the, the contrast in what is justice here, right? That, that they've detained. From the reports we had yesterday, that was house arrest. I think I, I'm. I don't know which it is, <clears throat> but. You, when, when someone is responsible for 100, 100 deaths, even by negligence or a significant suspect, you, you, you handle that approach, you, you detain them. You, you, this is where, like, you know, it's a matter of justice, even real justice by libertarians. And I don't like that government is the mechanism of this. I'm not promoting that at all. <clears throat> but even in an, an ideal society, a, a, an ethical society, you don't give someone as a suspect in a crime as serious as this the opportunity to avoid justice, to evade justice, because uh, even you know the negligent homicide of of a hundred people and the destruction that, that this blast represented. I'm starting to think the numbers were a little bit exaggerated. The government, what did they come up with? Three billion dollars worth of damage. Sounds like a typical government exaggeration looking for aid, right? Foreign aid, stealing from poor people in rich countries to give to rich people in poor countries. So there's a lot of corruption. There, there are a lot of, uh, you know, corrupt incentives and elements around this story. Um, so Lebanon's new prime minister, all right, sorry, uh, at least two Lebanese officials have resigned in a show of solidarity with protesters and to disassociate themselves from the government, even before the deadly explosion, protesters had regularly demonstrated against the alleged government corruption has led to economic failures in the country. The so-called October Revolution that started last fall led to violent clashes between demonstrators and police. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic on Thursday, Beirut registered 255 new infections, marking the largest single day increase, blah, 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 blah. International support has been swift and many among the Lebanese Diaspora, which has tripled the in-country population of 5 million, have promised to aid in the rebuilding of the small nation. It's beautiful, beautiful uh, public response to this. But if I, if I could say something to the Lebanese government two days ago, I would say, ride the wave, make concessions, and you can hold on to as much of your racket as possible that way. Right? Your guilt in this is undeniable. If you want to maintain your corrupt power system, you're going to have to face up to the facts, face up to the public demands for transparency, and concede some significant reforms. Don't worry, you can exaggerate them in the media and your propaganda. I mean, you can make it look really big. Like, like you know, the way the, the, the American government has done with cannabis – you know, legalization, you know, it looks like it's a lot more legal, but the drug war hasn't really decreased that much in its viciousness. And in fact, it might go up or have have gone up because the government's getting more money and they're actually arresting more people year over year for cannabis in, in the last few years. So, you know, OK, so Lebanon, you know, your government, it's, it's speaking to the Lebanese government, uh, that's that's what you should have done. But you already fucked it up. You tear gas, you, you didn't you didn't roll with it. You didn't you didn't identify with the people because you could have identified with the people and said yes and you try now you tried the prime minister oh, let me talk to mr diab when when he said that you know we are going to ruthlessly pursue those who who did this and 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 promised those 
when we find those responsible, they will pay a heavy price. Well, you could have identified, you could have maintained that attitude genuinely for just a, just, just a week longer even. Just suck it up. Suck it. Hold in the evil. Yeah, you screwed up. You, you want to preserve your racket here? Mm -mm. You, you really had to see, you needed to be marching with the protesters, Mr. Diab. And if you had done that, they said, yes. I am with you. I hear you. You are right. This happened because of a lack of government transparency and accountability. And as your prime minister, I apologize that I have not lived up to your expectations and that we have failed so miserably. And we will pursue those directly responsible. And I will do everything for the remainder of my term to regain your trust and make sure that you have confidence in the Lebanese government. And we will pursue those responsible together as a unified country. And pretend that you could, you could have pretended that the government was like part of the people, really. I mean, that did, did you hear that, Jim? That was some really good government propaganda I was spewing right there, was it not? Like, that would have been the smart thing to do. But I'm sorry, Mr. Diab. You gassed protesters for this? Mm -mm. Nah, you fucked yourself. It's too late now. I am going to be following what's going on in Lebanon with a bag of popcorn over the next few months. This is going to be fun. Let's hope that France doesn't fuck it up for them and the rest of the world doesn't. I mean, I'm, I'm not hopeful, right? We live in a world where the CIA exists. <laughs> There's going to be meddling. But to the Lebanese people, enjoy this one. You're going to have fun. The next uh, at least few months, at least, if not few years, I mean, what, what would I, you want me to make the prediction here? That th th there's going to be uh, a period of unrest and demand for, the ne for, for somewhere between three months and uh, one or two years, maybe. I hope it doesn't last that long. I think it'll be, I'm guessing it'll be closer on the short side, like more like three to six months. You're going to see this period of, of upheaval and demand for change. And it's going to come to a breaking point. You're going to see some fundamental shift in the Lebanese government. I hope it's genuine because what often, I mean, it's so easy, right, to turn the government of Lebanon, to turn the country of Lebanon in a period of revolution like this to being more of a you know satellite nation of a first world country like, like France or like the U.S., and if the American CIA gets involved, uh, it's not going to help the situation. We we got we have to genuinely support at this point. Excuse me, the 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 true right of a uh, self determination uh, of every Lebanese person, and uh, that, that yeah, that there's no collective right, but to to make sure that there is no foreign intervention that is going to lead to. Uh, a much greater government exploitation of Lebanon, as we've seen so many times throughout history, that uh, big governments are able to step in and pervert these small governments reforming in order to serve the sponsors of big government. And in the case of the United States, that's usually the military industrial complex. Yeah. Uh, accidental explosion in Beirut. Now we got to look out for the U.S. military industrial complex getting involved. Sad, but that's the world we live in. Best of luck to the Lebanon, Lebanese people, really enjoy this.